Today, the people of Mangu are known as Ulchi, which means local residents. Long ago, their ancestors took a liking to the lower reaches of the Amor and found at the village of Bulave here. There are around 2,500 Ulchi in the Kabaros Krai, and 700 of them live in Bulava. We believed, the Ulchi believed, that people live everywhere. In the sky, there are sky people. River, people live in the water, yes. There are taiga people. Everything, every object, has a living soul. These beliefs would probably not have survived to the present day if it hadn't been for the sacred fights with a bear, the main sacrament in the spiritual life of this people. The bloodline of the Ulchi has its roots in the Neolithic era, when indigenous Paleo-Asiatic tribes settled on the banks of the Lower Amur. By the beginning of the Common Era, they had mixed with Tungus Manchurian peoples who came here from the south. And finally, in the Middle Ages, the Ulchi were joined by the Ainu, the inhabitants of Sakhalin, and the islands of Japan, who settled near the future village of Bulava, the capital of Ulchi. According to legend, the village was founded by the Rasugbu clan, whose ancestors made a secret agreement with local spirits. They allowed people to live on the river in exchange for the promise to respect the Amor, or Mangu, and pray to the lord of all spirits of the taiga, Duente Adeni, who took the form of an enormous bear. Our forefathers asked permission to chop down trees in the taiga, from the lords of the taiga, from the spirits. Our forefathers, who lived in Aori, also did this. Before they took fish from the Amor, they also had to ask. And of course, they had to live on very good terms with all the spirits, with the lords, of our land, to give them gifts, to treat them very respectfully. So they had a very good, tolerant attitude to nature. This agreement between people and the spirits of nature was carried out religiously. Every year on the banks of the Amor, the Ulchi sacrifice a sacred bear to the almighty Duente Adeni, a messenger to the world of the spirits which for thousands of years protected the peace of the taiga and river. People used to ask permission from the Amor because they respected and feared the revenge of its spirits. Now permission is issued by environmental organizations. In 1931, the Kamoro Panikusu fishing farm was opened in Bulava. The name means strength and unity. Since then, the lifestyle of centuries has changed, seemingly irreversibly. During the years of Soviet rule, the Ulchi almost lost their identity. Many began to forget their native language. We chopped down alder, birch, and aspen these three types of material. I'm saying that I've even forgotten the name of alder in Ulchi. I named aspen and birch, but this is how the language slowly disappears. Even people of my age speak it badly. Many don't speak it at all. But the 20th century ground down the foundations of the spiritual culture of the Ulchi. The people of the river began to ignore the obligations that their ancestors had taken on before the local spirits. The New Age declared the human being to be the lord of nature. People became the lords of the earth, not the spirits, as was the case in the past. According to Ulchi mythology, every being has a spirit, and even a stone has its own lord. So everything has a spirit, the taiga, the mountains, and the forest, and the amur. 
this respect for nature seemed too naive for modern civilization until it began to destroy itself in wars and catastrophes and destroy the environment as well. One example is the Amor, polluted with industrial waste, where the native inhabitants, the Ulchi, also began to believe in progress at a certain moment. Disappointment came when the water of the sacred lake became unsuitable to drink. Now the ancestors of the clan of Rasugbu have the living water delivered in cisterns which they pay for by coupon. This is a kind of mystical payment for violating the ancient agreement. To restore the trust of the spirits, the elders decided that they had to return to their roots. But how could they do this if the people had stopped living in the old way? Some of us say, why do you use these modern technologies if you adhere to traditional culture? I reply to them, my comrades, you fish in the traditional way, but you buy modern motors. Why don't you use oars? You want me to do everything by hand but you use modern technology. I'm not so stupid, I say. I'm like you. I'm sensible enough. At any rate, I still need to carve by hand. Thank God. No modern technology can carve like this. The craftsman knows what he is talking about. Folk art is not just about copying. It is the spirit of the people embodied in material. The revival of the Bear Festival, and also the entire culture of the people, is directly connected with this mansion which is adorned with Ulchi carving. It was here in 1990 that Yuri Kuwasali, Ivan Rasugbu, and several other enthusiasts decided to revive the most important ritual of Ulchi culture, which was consigned to oblivion during the years of Soviet rule. It's not actually a bear festival, but Buen Bi Ku Puden Si U, which can be translated as a game with a bear. But the modern interpretation is the bear festival. That's not quite correct, of course. The idea of the bear festival is remembering one's parents. It was a clan festival, but later, at a more modern stage, it changed. To hold this festival, a whole ritual complex was built. A granary on stilts, the taktu where the ritual utensils were held, and a winter wooden frame house, the kargu, where the guests feasted. Behind it was a log house, the kori, where the bear was kept. And then there was a tomb decorated with an ornamental pattern, the keren, and the actual place for the ritual killing of the bear, the arachu. Everything was included here, so to speak. There were competitions and the nimblest was chosen. Over several days, the margin was chosen, the strongest and nimblest. He received the right to kill the bear and he was given three arrows. The first arrow purifies the path into the spirit world. And so he had two arrows to kill the bear with. This is the footage of the festival that was held in Bulava back in 1990. It is a reconstruction of an ancient ritual intended to revive the tradition of revering the spirits of this place, which was broken over a hundred years ago. The basis for reconstructing the unique ritual was found in the diaries of the Russian ethnographer Leopold Schrenk. He witnessed one of the last of the bear games which the Ulchi held before the revolution of 1917. The most fascinating elements were the sketches of the ritual meal, the Nagarka, a kind of pagan communion with the spirit world. 
The clan of the Taiga people and the clan of the water people took part in it. They competed in eating and drinking, which symbolized a union with the flesh of the lord of the Taiga, Duente Adeni, and the blood of the Amor River. The day in March when the Bear Games were revived according to the ancient tradition marked the beginning of the modern history of the people. This was the spring which taught the Ulchi to look back once more. To honor the graves of their ancestors, their sacred sites, and nature itself. Everything that had determined the life of this native people over centuries. In the past, among the numerous sacred places on the Amor, Cape Aori held a special place for the Ulchi. It is the mysterious place of power where the cults of water, the taiga, and the mountains come together as one, where the worship began of the great spear in the form of a bear, Duente Adeni. Behind me is a wonderful finger the finger of the mountain spirit. You can see it there. In Ulchi, it is called Kaldiam Tumutu, the finger of the mountain spirit. Obviously, the Ulchi worshipped these places. When they came here, they always brought offerings to the mountain spirit. Of course, the mountain spirit is very strong. It's a powerful being. And so, people bowed before it. It is washed by the Amor and located on the boundary between the water, the mountains, and also the taiga. So it is an intermediary between three elements, three worlds. For Rasugbu, this place is also symbolic because according to legend, this is where the first sacred place of the Ulchi was. It was from here that the family tree began. And here, the cult of nature originated, and the praise of its beauty. Everything around is full of life, and even the tree which I will work with as a carver has its own unique spirit, its own clan pattern. You won't make something if you don't look to your roots, to the sources of the clan. This is where the secret of our design lies. The spirits only allow us to reproduce it. The main thing is not to make up things yourself, but to do everything strictly according to the canon. The list of these laws and taboos is unchanged, just as the rock is unchanged where the Ulchi craftsman brings his offerings to the Lord of the Taiga. These offerings are not as bloody as the first ones that remote ancestors made to the bear spirit. This cult at the foothills of the ancient mountain would have been long forgotten if it had not been for the ancestors of the clan of Rasugbu and Kuisali. They tried once more to establish a connection with the world of spirits on that memorable day when they sent a bear messenger for the last time to Duente Deni, the lord of the taiga. The Bear Festival had great importance. It stopped the disappearance of the memory and faith of the people. Initially, we built it as an ethnographic museum complex. We have an art school in this building because we study our art from old exhibits and utensils. Traditionally, this is how we teach children about our uh, art. Almost all the exhibits are ritual elements of the Bear Festival. There is probably no more symbolic place for introducing the younger generation to the culture of their ancestors. And in this sense, the art school is not a museum, but a living space where the melodies and movements of a vanished era are revived. We teach folk dancing, traditional Ulchi folk art, and oral folk art. We have our own ensemble. I've been the director since 1991. We have 102 children here. It's a real school.
The first pupils arrive here at around 9 in the morning, and the house where the sacrament of the last bear festival once took place is once more filled with life and bustle. The children enter a space which connects them with generations and generations of ancestors. The history of the people comes to life before their eyes. Children are taught about their native culture by local artisans, above all by the director's wife, Lilia Kuwasali. This passes from generation to generation because I went to the children's art school and now I work here. Yuri also went here as well, and even my children did too. That's how it happens, because everyone knows that there's an art school here and everyone goes to it. They even may continue to attend the school when they are adults or even when they're parents later in life. The most important thing for the Kuwasali family is to preserve this living thread, to revive interest among children not only in traditional art, but in dances where elements of the Bear Festival come to life. Soon, it will be seen again in all its glory even if it's in a noisy city on the day of Ulchi culture and not on the sacred rock above the Amur. We're going to have a concert of three ensembles. There's the Diro ensemble from the children's school. Then there's the adult ensemble, the Giva or Don singing and dancing ensemble. And there's also the Costa children's ensemble. Diro is from the art school. There's going to be a general rehearsal for a trip to Kabarovsk on the uh, day of Ulchi culture. The revival of the Bear Festival in Bulav is not a momentary form of entertainment, but a whole science of communication with the past, with the soul of the people. The children are at an embroidery class at the moment, which will be followed by a local history lesson, and in the evening comes the most important thing, a reconstruction of the bear dances at the ensemble rehearsal. With this schedule, it seems there's no time left for leisure, but they find it, even on the way from the museum gate to the bus stop. Children are children. For them, everything around them is just a game. But if you don't teach them about the culture of their ancestors today, it's unlikely they'll get enthusiastic about it tomorrow. Without this education, these kids will fly away from their native nest without ever feeling or discovering that they are real Ulchi, the people who long ago worshipped and revered the spirits of the taiga and river, holding the sacred bear festival every year on the banks of the Amur. Only today, this ancient ritual is taking on a somewhat different life. From the bloody sacrifices and ritual combats of the fight with the bear, it has turned into the Bear Festival, a secular performance at the House of Culture. First, the natural world of the Amur is displayed in the dances, and then the life of the Ulchi ancestors, hunting in the taiga, fighting for brides, and jumping ropes as a symbol of the birth of children. And finally, there is an almost savage dance where waving the arm symbolizes the death that comes to the bear to the accelerating rhythm of tambourines. Then a time comes for revelry and sad songs, where the world of the spirit ancestors and the world of earthly passions are intertwined as one. In every part of the performance, in every song, the traditions of the past are revived. It is important to preserve these things without distorting the meaning of words and movements and to convey in a secular performance all the profundity and beauty of the folk art, which originated as part of the Bear Festival.
Today, the Bear Festival has gained a second life and a second name, the Day of Ulchi Culture. Balava, as I said before, is a great center of Ulchi culture. We are reviving and developing traditions, especially as we didn't forget them. I mean, all of us, the creative intelligentsia of Bulava. Like a different world, magic rituals and cults of the past coexist with everyday life. The custodians of their sacred meanings prepare their precepts for future generations. The ancient cult is not only reborn on the stage, but also in its shadow, where the pattern of the past and present intertwine as one, where a sacred dialogue takes place between the artist and the spirits of the past under the dim light of an old lamp. We must always observe a unity of form and content. This means that the pattern must fill the entire space the entire surface, and so that symmetry is not broken anywhere. The trick of this pattern is in that it begins where it stops. As it were, there are no clearly cut-off ends. It is like the cosmos. It has no beginning or end. A sense of the world as a complex and beautiful harmony, this is the main secret and magic of the Ulchi culture. Because native people, who were once thought to have a primitive outlook, were able to create such an incredible and sophisticated visual world. This trefoil has magical significance in Ulchi design. In Ulchi, Ba means eternity, cosmos, the sky. This is a broad concept. Every line states that in the pattern of life, everything repeats endlessly. We must simply not break this thread. The fine connection with the world of spirits of the taiga and river, which is brought to life every year by shadows of the local house of culture. The ancient history of the Ulchi is an intricate pattern in itself. The memory of it helped craftsmen not to turn away from the spirits of the Amor in the era of faithlessness. Today they revive the soul of the people and the designs, dances, and melodies of their ancestors. They revive them for those who have yet to realize the importance of the path leading back to the sources of ancient rituals which embody the eternal harmony between the people of Mangu and the generous nature of the Amor region.